go over how to install OpenShift Complainer Platform on IBM Cloud using the IBM Cloud Console method. So this method is for the managed version of OpenShift, meaning that you get a, a slew of technical support as well as um, update and infrastructure update that you wouldn't normally get with a normal unmanaged version of OpenShift. There's a few prerequisites, although they're not as heavy as using the IPI method. I'm just going to go over them again. Um, you do need to have an IBM account that you can use to provision the infrastructure. And while it is not required, it is helpful to have the IBM Cloud and OC command line interface tools installed in your local machine. And I'll put the link for uh, how to do that below. So the first thing that we're going to do is log in to our cloud.ibm.com dashboard. As you can see here, this is my IBM Cloud dashboard. We're going to navigate over to this hamburger menu, select OpenShift, go to Overview, click Create an OpenShift cluster. And as you can see here, for some other helpful information, they do have how to create an OpenShift cluster using the command line interface tools. But again, you do need to have the IBM Cloud and OC tools uh, installed on your laptop or your desktop. The other thing that they tell you is how to create an app using a GitHub repository in OpenShift, as well as how to expose it publicly. So we're going to go ahead and click the plus on this OpenShift cluster. As you can see, you can select the version, the latest version, the most recent stable version, as well as the default, and another stable version. So we're going to go ahead and do the most recent version, which is 4.4.1.17. For infrastructure, I'm going to select Classic. Uh, it'll allow you to run your cluster with native subnet and VLAN networking, or you can do a fully customizable software-defined virtual network, as well as uh, using the IBM Cloud VPC. For resource group, select Default, unless you have another one created that you would like to use. Uh, for availability, we're going to be doing single zone. North America, and I'm going to be selecting the zone that is closest to me. Give it a few seconds to verify this information. So as you can see, no VLANs exist. It is going to create a VLAN for you. You can also change the flavor if you're looking for something cheaper or something more expensive. I'm going to go with the cheapest version for the use case of this which is four vCPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. You can have it select encryption, and you can also define the number of worker nodes you'd like per zone. The cluster name for this, I'm going to go ahead and do OCP install. And you can add some tags if you'd like, uh, which can help you organize your resource. So as you can see here, it's giving the monthly estimated costs as well as uh, the license information and uh, IP allocation. So go ahead and click Create on here. And it will take a few seconds to verify. And now, as you can see, it is preparing my master and my worker nodes. And once this is all done, it will show me or it allow me to go to the OpenShift web console. So I'm going to stop the video here just uh, for the second. And I will come back when my cluster has been uh, fully prepared. See, uh, the OCP install cluster has been created. It's set to normal right now. And we are kind of given this really nice little overview dashboard that we can click through to find uh, interesting information about the cluster. So. I'm just going to click through a few things and go over, and then we'll go over how to destroy this cluster. So if I click Overview, you can see I get a nice summary of all of my different information. I can connect to logging. I can connect to monitoring. I can enable key management service. Um, I also get the health uh, information for my worker nodes. If I click into those worker nodes, I can actually see the IP address of the worker pool. Uh, going to worker pools, because I only set up uh, one worker pool. I only have one worker pool. We also have this really cool DevOps uh, dashboard that we can use to create uh,
tool chains, set up our continuous delivery and deployment. Um, just really some interesting little add-ons that you get out of the box that you don't normally get with other uh, OpenShift cluster deployments. So if we go back to Access, uh, we can kind of see some information here about accessing the cluster. If I wanted to open up the OpenShift web console, I can do that. And while that's opening up, you can also see you can access it from here at any point of any of the dashboards. So it will take a little bit to load the first time, but you can see you already get logged in, which is really a, a nice little trick. You don't have to remember any of the cube admin information. Um, you also get your basic OpenShift versioning information. As you can see, it's currently updating. Um, and again, just some really interesting pieces of information that you can see. Uh, it's, it authenticates with my uh, IBM information. So I don't have to remember any sort of cube admin information or user information like you would with uh, a normal IPI install. And you can also use this IBM information to log in from the console. And then again, just the final step is to go ahead and delete this cluster. So again, uh, sticking with the uh, UI based actions, you can uh, click this action drop down and see there's the web terminal connecting via command line information. If I, I connect or I click connect here, it'll show me how to do that. And then if I wanted to delete my cluster, just go ahead and click delete cluster. It does require you to type this information, and I'm going to go ahead and delete everything. And it will go through and destroy the cluster. And so that is how you install and destroy a cluster on the IBM Cloud using our IBM Cloud console. Thanks.